Ever wonder how Theodore and Franklin, the 26th and 32nd presidents of the United States, managed to skyrocket the Roosevelt family name to popularity? Can you believe that these two, initially arriving in New York City with almost nothing to their name, would go on to make a monumental impact on American history? What do you think fueled their journey from humble beginnings to becoming key figures responsible for significant political and social changes? Let's find out. The Roosevelt family is an American political family with a legacy spanning generations. But how did they build this legacy, and what has become of it? Claes Martinson van Rosenveld was the early ancestor of the Roosevelt family, and the man whose sons would ultimately produce two American presidents. He arrived in New Amsterdam, America, now New York City, between 1638 and 1649. Around 1652, he acquired a 24 Morgan farm in Midtown Manhattan, including the present Empire State Building site. Because Holland had recently been liberated from Spanish rule and was experiencing a period of prosperity, it's believed that Claes may have migrated in pursuit of religious freedom rather than out of economic need. Claes and his wife, Jeanette, had five children. Among them was their son, Nicholas, who is part of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR's lineage. By 1680, Nicholas Roosevelt relocated to Esopus, near Kingston, an early Dutch settlement in New Netherlands. He marks the initial generation of Roosevelt men who settled in the Hudson River Valley, specifically Wiltwick, later renamed Esopus, after the indigenous Native American tribe. Esopus eventually evolved into Kingston, the first capital of New York. Engaged in trapping and trading, Nicholas built a positive relationship with the Native American community, earning widespread respect. He later returned to New York City and established a mill for grinding wheat and corn. Nicholas married Elchi van Kunst, and together they raised ten children. It was Nicholas who initiated the use of the Roosevelt spelling and held the family's first political office as an alderman. Achieving Freeman status on August 23, 1698, Nicholas was politically active and aligned with the party of Jacob Leisler, a leader in the 1689 insurrection supporting Dutch stadtholder William III of Orange Nassau's succession to the English throne in the Revolution of 1688. He served as an alderman from 1698 to 1701, and later for the West Ward in 1715. His sons, Johannes and Jacobus, became the founders of the Oyster Bay and Hyde Park branches, respectively. In the late 19th century, the Hyde Park Roosevelts aligned with the Democratic Party, while the Oyster Bay Roosevelts were associated with the Republicans. Despite occasional political differences leading to active campaigning within the family, both branches generally maintained a friendly relationship. Many generations passed before the Roosevelt family became politically inclined again after Nicholas Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt, the great-great-grandson of Nicholas Roosevelt, assumed the presidency on September 14, 1901, following the assassination of President William McKinley, and served as the 26th President of the United States until March 4, 1909. Rising from the vice presidency after just 194 days, Theodore, a Republican, secured a decisive victory in the 1904 election for a full four-year term. When Theodore Roosevelt was the president, he worked hard to save many places like forests, parks, and wildlife areas. He protected about 230 million acres, which is a big part of the United States, around 10%. His goal was to keep safe the things we get from nature that people need. This idea of taking care of nature is what he's remembered for. After he passed away, people wanted to honor and remember him, so they decided to create a special place called a national park. That's why we have national parks today, to protect nature and remember Theodore Roosevelt's important work. However, his presidency concluded with the inauguration of his chosen successor and protege, William Howard Taft. After Theodore Roosevelt's death in 1919, it was about 13 years before Franklin Roosevelt became president. 
Franklin D. Roosevelt was born in 1882 to James Roosevelt and his wife Sarah Ann Delano Roosevelt. James Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt's father, had joined a law firm after completing law school at Harvard. He also became part of the board of directors for a coal company in Maryland. He applied what he learned from his experience to his own business ventures, mostly in coal and transportation. He held positions such as Vice President of the Delaware and Hudson Railway and President of the Southern Railway Security Company. After his father died in 1863, James inherited both wealth and the position as the head of the family. He bought an estate called Springwood in 1871. In 1871, he became the town supervisor of Hyde Park. Despite being interested in politics, he turned down offers to run for the New York State Assembly, Senate or Congress. In the 1880s, he supported Grosvenor Cleveland's campaign for governor and president. In the 1880s, he supported Grover Cleveland's campaigns for governor and president. After Cleveland won the presidency in 1884, the Roosevelt family visited the White House regularly. There were rumors that Roosevelt might be appointed to a diplomatic position, but he didn't pursue those opportunities. He did, however, help his eldest son James secure a diplomatic post in Vienna. He passed away in 1900, leaving his son, Franklin Roosevelt, a small inheritance. But most of the money went to his wife, Sarah. Hence, even as an adult, Franklin depended heavily on his mother's financial support. In 1905, Eleanor and Franklin D. Roosevelt got married. The circumstances leading to their marriage were somewhat complex. Eleanor Roosevelt was Theodore Roosevelt's niece and Franklin's fifth cousin, and they had known each other since childhood. However, Franklin's dominating mother, Sarah Delano Roosevelt, disapproved of the match. Despite family tensions, Franklin and Eleanor's paths crossed again in 1902. Franklin proposed to Eleanor, and she accepted. His mother initially resisted the engagement, but eventually she gave her blessing with the condition that the couple would become engaged but delay the wedding until Franklin could support a family independently. They lived on the family estate in Hyde Park and in Manhattan townhouses. Franklin invested in local land, bought cars, and tried his hand in law and politics using his mother's money or by borrowing against her estate. In the 1990s, Franklin earned about $20,000 per year, working for the Navy and renting out his townhouse. Roosevelt continued relying on his mother's financial support until he became president in 1933 receiving a $75,000 per year salary. Before becoming the president, he pursued a legal career in New York City after completing his university education. Serving as a member of the New York State Senate from 1911 to 1913, he later became the Assistant Secretary of the Navy under President Woodrow Wilson during World War I. In the 1920 US presidential election, Roosevelt was the Democratic Party's vice presidential candidate alongside James M. Cox, but they were defeated by Republican nominee Warren G. Harding. In 1921, before Roosevelt became president, he was faced with a difficult situation when he contracted a paralytic illness, resulting in permanent leg paralysis. He soon began seeking out treatments that he hoped would help him walk again. In 1924, a friend suggested that FDR visit an old resort built around Mineral Springs. The resort in Warm Springs, Georgia, was dilapidated, but FDR was delighted that he was able to walk while immersed in the buoyant waters. After several years of treatments and exercise, he taught himself to stand and take a few haltering steps using steel leg braces and some personal assistance. However, FDR never recovered sufficient strength in his atrophied muscles to stand or walk again unassisted. But with constant encouragement from his wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, he re-entered public service as the governor of New York from 1929 to 1933. During this time, he implemented programs to combat the Great Depression. In the 1932 presidential election, Roosevelt secured a decisive victory over Republican President Herbert Hoover. While the election took place in 1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt officially assumed the presidency on March 4, 1933. As president, 
Roosevelt's first 100 days marked a historic period where he enacted unprecedented federal legislation to address the severe economic crisis. He introduced a series of programs which he called the New Deal. His initiative transformed American politics, realigning it to the Fifth Party system, and shaped American liberalism for decades. His New Deal initiative was focused on providing relief programs for the unemployed and farmers, initiating economic recovery measures, and instituted regulatory reforms in finance, communications, and labor. He also oversaw the end of prohibition. However, his key enduring achievements include the creation of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the National Labor Relations Act, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and Social Security. FDR's net worth grew during his first term as president. While his primary focus was on leading the nation through the economic crisis, his successful policies had a positive impact on the economy. Despite winning re-election in 1944, his declining physical health during the war years led to his death in 1945. He served as President of the United States for four terms. He was elected in 1932, 1936, 1940, and 1944, making him the only US President to serve more than two terms. He passed away in April 1945 during his fourth term. While some of his actions, such as the internment of Japanese Americans in concentration camps, have faced criticism, historical assessments consistently rank him as one of the greatest American presidents. Even though the Roosevelts might have had access to generational wealth through inheritance and connections, their net worth also grew through their individual efforts and accomplishments. Among the properties owned by FDR are FDR's home in Hyde Park, New York, officially named Springwood, but the Roosevelts always referred to the site simply as Hyde Park or the Big House. The home was originally built in 1826 and was purchased by FDR's father, James Roosevelt, in 1867. Although the house belonged to his mother until her death in 1941, Springwood was FDR's principal residence throughout his life. The 33.23-acre site in Hyde Park, New York, that included Springwood, its outbuildings, and the Rose Garden was open to the public a year later. It's managed by the National Park Service as part of the Roosevelt Vanderbilt National Historic Sites. The Franklin D. Roosevelt Library, the nation's first presidential library, was built under FDR's direction on 16 acres of the Springwood estate that were donated to the U.S. government. The library is managed by the National Archives and Records Administration. In 1924, FDR granted Eleanor and two of her close friends, Marion Dickerman and Nancy Cook, a life interest in a piece of property known as Val Kill, Dutch for Valley Stream, located about a mile from the Springwood estate. This was primarily because Eleanor never felt comfortable at all at Springwood because FDR's mother, Sarah, continued to live there and to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the house. The three women built a small house called the Stone Cottage to be used by Dickerman and Cook, and later built a furniture factory known as Val Kill Industries. After the factory closed in 1836, Eleanor converted it into a cottage for herself that she used as a weekend or vacation getaway during the remaining White House years. Following FDR's death in 1945, Eleanor used the factory as her permanent home until her death in 1962. The Val Kill property was acquired by the US government in 1977 and now is managed by the National Park Services as part of the Roosevelt Vanderbilt National Historic Sites. In 1926, FDR purchased the resort in Warm Springs in order to convert it into a treatment center for polio victims and a year later, he established the Georgia Warm Springs Foundation, which then acquired both the resort and the surrounding farmland. During his presidency, he used his cottage in Warm Springs regularly as a place to continue his recovery and as a retreat from Washington, D.C. Because many associates accompanied FDR to help him carry on the affairs of the state, his cottage at Warm Springs became known as the Little White House. FDR died at Warm Springs on April 2, 1945. 
Franklin D. Roosevelt had an impressive net worth of $60 million. His financial success was a combination of inheritance, investments, and his salary as president. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't hesitate to tap the next button to watch other fascinating content. Leave a comment on who you'd like us to cover next time.